Ladies and gentlemen, Silent Mike back with another video. Today we're talking about squats and deadlifts and if they're necessary and if they are the king of exercises. Before we dive in, do your boy a favor, subscribe. Let's see if we can get a thousand likes on this video. Give me a little thumbs up. Comment below what topics, questions you want me to cover in the next video. Let's dig in. We got a comment from my guy. He said deadlifts and squats are mandatory exercises and you must do. You must do. Now, I might disagree. So. First off, when we're choosing our exercises, exercise selection does matter very, and it's very dependent on the athlete, the history of the athlete, and the ultimate goal of the athlete. If your goal is to be a three lift powerlifting, the sport of powerlifting is squat, bench, deadlift, then I agree with my man. Deadlifts and squats are mandatory because you're going to have to compete in them and you're going to have to perform a one rep max in those movements. If you never do them, if all you do is lunges and all you do is, is hamstring curls and calf raises and then you hop into powerlifting meet, chances are you won't hit a good one rep max, your best one rep max, or even hit them to competition standard. But if we're talking about the regular public who just wants to get a little bit fitter, look a little bit better, everyone wants to gain a little bit of more muscle, lose a little bit more fat, that's how we often look our best, most sexually attractive, most aesthetic, or maybe you're a sport athlete. Maybe you played basketball in high school, college, or professionally, football or soccer, uh, American football, rugby, hockey, doesn't matter. I would disagree and I would say that there's a number of exercises that we can implement instead of the deadlift and squat. It will depend on the athlete. Now, in the past, uh, I worked with a lot of collegiate athletes, both rugby and basketball in particular. Um, that's just the community I knew and those are the sports that I played. Uh, and we had a, good, a very good athlete, shout out to my, my, my homie little Chris, um, very good scorer in basketball. He was probably about 6'3", 6'4", 6'5". As he started going, getting older, I coached him from in basketball as a freshman in high school and then in strength and conditioning up until he was in college. And uh, for one, uh, he grew very rapidly from uh, freshman year to when he turned 18. He probably grew from 5'8 to 6'5. Uh, and then two, he played basketball and he played a lot of basketball very hard. So he had a little bit tender knees sometimes, maybe tendonitis. Um, sore knees, et cetera, et cetera. In which case, we just didn't deadlift and we hardly squatted. Um, we do a lot of stuff to warm up his legs, uh, a lot of different mobilities. Uh, we would do box squats, sometimes even high box squats. I just wanted to get some kind of stimulus and strength into those legs. We did a lot of Bulgarian split squats, both weighted and unloaded body weight movements. Um, and then for back stuff, you know, yes, uh, 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 deadlifts are one of the best hamstring, glutes, and low back movements for overall strength. Um, but we can get around stuff like that. We can do back extensions, we can do rows, chin-ups, et cetera, to hit the upper back. Um, and again, reverse lunges, walking lunges, um, and tons of different hamstring movements, hamstring curls even, um, for some team athletes are very applicable. Uh, now, if we're talking bodybuilding, um, you know, I think there's a big definition here also when you start to talk about, you know, IFB, IFBB and maybe enhanced lifting um, in a natural bodybuilder or someone who does not take PEDs of any nature. I think that someone who does not take PEDs, yes, squats and deadlifts still are probably one of the best movements you can implement for overall muscle building, uh, strength building. When we're adding as much load as we can, deadlift is often an exercise, if not the exercise that every human on earth can perform with the most amount of weight. If the number is bigger, not only are we using more muscles in our body, uh, the stimulus is greater and also the progression is greater. So number one, if again, I, I talked about this in another video, if I'm doing a hamstring curl, a single leg hamstring curl, and I'm using 30 pounds on one hamstring to add 5% to that load is going to be really, really hard. Uh, it's going to end up being a pound, two pound, three pound, which sometimes you don't have the increments on the machine. But if I'm to add 5% on my 500 pound deadlift now adding a couple plates every other week once a month etc is much easier um, not only on our system uh, but for the overall progress not only daily weekly monthly yearly and through our whole career um, we also have to look at the goal of the individual if strength in general is even the ultimate goal if you're playing a team sport if you're an endurance athlete uh, if you again just want to look a little bit better strength training will always help but if you're one rep max or Optimal strength, top end strength, doesn't necessarily have to be the goal. I think that all sports uh, can benefit, even marathon runners can benefit slightly from some strength training, um, but the overall goal of that strength training isn't necessarily top end strength, it's uh, durability, uh, it's muscle imbalances, it's building a little bit of muscle, and it's almost like recovery for some of those athletes um, to be able to even out body parts that may get overused in their sport in their daily lives. 
Again, I don't think there's any definites in anything we do in any sport. There's always workarounds, especially in the weight room. And that's kind of the goal of the strength and conditioning coach, the personal trainer, the whatever it is. Their goal uh, or, or their task is to have this huge, huge pool of tools and allow them to think it through problem solve, critical think, and how to apply them and when to apply them to work around. Now, I learned it all through training athletes, soccer moms, um, the elderly, and powerlifters over the last 10 years. And so some of it just takes time, a lot of observing, a lot of reading, and a lot of application itself. Some failures, some successes, and you start to figure out what works. But my ultimate decision, my the stamp in the foot, I'm drawing the line in the sand, squats and deadlifts are not necessary. They are great but they are not necessary. I appreciate it, guys. Be sure to give this thing a thumbs up. Comment below. Find me on Twitch. We're streaming every single day. My new podcast, 50% Facts, is on iTunes, Spotify, anywhere you want. I appreciate you. Sound the mic. I'm out of here.